Okay, hey, getting focused. take a look. I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm very close to finishing the uh, prototype armature and having a lot of fun doing it, but I want to have even more fun. So how do we do that when it's really late at night, you know, and, and there's nobody else around? Well, we geek out a little bit. And I'm not really going to get into this right now because the whole weathering process is a whole other ball of wax. But if anybody knows me and is watching this, what I'm going for is the authentic method of coloring and each finger has its own little stuff happening, and, and, but we're still going to keep this authentic. I'm not trying to match every single little nuance. I'm trying to get as close as possible with the organic original methods used without any trickery or forced control or any of that. How Lou Carlucci did it is how I'm going to do it with certain things in mind, like perhaps the ring finger has a bit more, um, how shall I say, wear and tear compared to the others, a little bit more blackness here and there. Um, a little scorching, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to try to do a quick, because I've been practicing with my methods for a while now, behind the scenes on a lot of scrap metal. I'm going to try a quick weathering procedure of the tip. Well, let me do the whole finger joint of the ring. We'll see how we do. So let's see where we're going to start. Okay, so here's the ring. And, uh, oh, I also didn't tell you guys, and you can, if I turn this over, you're going to see this is actually quite brown. Um, because if you remember, we heated the uh, we heated the pipe from the inside, and the outside became well. Anyway, you get the whole deal. Um, I clean the metal, uh, the surface, when I'm ready to start working. Uh, but I generally keep the inside like this. I may give this a clean when I'm done. But I haven't shown anybody this. Uh, aside from this, which I haven't engraved yet, every piece of this glove has been engraved. And what it says is T C, my initials. So it's right there, T and then a C around it, and it says Proto, and then it has the date. Every single finger has this to it. So, um, it's, uh, what is it, 03, 2014, and I'm gonna do the back plate last. And all of my gloves will be engraved as such with my Dremel. Every piece of it, by date, and by glove number. These are gonna include the ones that are going out to the guys. So, let's talk about it. So here's my ring which I'm really, really happy with. It turned out better than I could have hoped, but I've been building these for a while, so I'm pretty adept at it at this point, getting all the little nuances of this piece. Now, what I need to do also is, you'll see a line of demarcation here. This is the blade line, and I've gone ahead and etched that in with a light epoxy. I'm actually gonna Dremel that down very lightly so I have a slight groove to let the blades sit because all the blades as you know they have different pitch and different yaw um, in terms of angle and what you're looking at and how. So I want to make this a little bit darker and uh, what I can do is I can actually just use the epoxy to give me a better guideline because it starts to wear off pretty easily as you can see. So if I hit this with a little heat um, to begin with it will bring this out and actually scorch the epoxy that's on the surface. Uh, whether or not I, you know, it remains when the blades are brazed is, is negligible. I, would, I just want a good line of demarcation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to get crazy with it. I'm kind of in a geeky mood. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. Using the authentic method on the authentic type and copper pipe. Let's rock and roll. Well, this is not a final piece because this needs to be sanded. Uh, but in order to mark off the, uh, the top line for the blade positioning, this is the ring. I thought I'd show this even without the sanding. These are some of the colors that this pipe picks up which for the ring is actually pretty darn authentic. Obviously we're not talking about braze lines or anything like that, but the base colors and the base weathering, it's all here. Had I sanded this thing, it would have been perfect. I probably would have kept it. But as we're not doing that, the glare is a little bit too much to my liking, but for the rest of the build, we'll keep it as such 
And uh, why did I do it? Oh, I was bored and just wanted to give it some uniformity and geek out a little bit and give you guys a treat. And with that, let's just go the whole nine yards as we're fitting the P210 replicas tonight. Because this has got to go into full weathering in one short day. And I have to go ahead and warp that tang, but pretty nice coloring on the authentic pipe. Can't get that the sheet, that's for sure. Really, really nice. Let's see if I can pick this up. Okay, there we go. It's the real McCoy. Absolutely stunning. Let's see if there's some different lighting set up, shall we? There we go. Really nice. Really nice. Really happy. Just even with this test. Test color. Let's call it that. Yeah, is that what we're calling it, babe? Yeah. Are you meowing at me? <laughs> My girl meows. Not bad. All right, so there it is. Let's see, it's a bit more light in here. Nice diffused light. There you go, guys. The authentic weathering application, at least, if not the final piece. But wanted to give you guys a taste of how the pipe looks with this terribly smudged blade. Let's see if we can at least polish that sucker a little bit. Yeah. Polished P210 replica on top. And uh, imagine how that's going to look when the hilt is all blasted. Pretty cool shit.